Hey Lan, hi folks, it's Lev. Welcome back to another video. For those of you who are new, I use him pronouns. I am officially five five years. I don't know why, I was about to say five months. I'm officially five years on YouTube and that's what this video is gonna be about. Um I'm viewing this video early, um, before June 15th, but um that by the time this video is posted, um and the time that you'll see this video, it will be June 15th, which is when I posted my first YouTube video on this channel. And I want to talk about reflections, growth, what I've learned, and um, just my thoughts on this whole journey, and at the end, share a message to other people who want to embark on content creation. I can't believe five years has passed since I started making YouTube videos. I It doesn't feel like five years, and it's it's a bit surreal to me because when I started my channel, um, if you if this is your ever if this is the first video you you've seen of me, uh, it might be helpful to know that I'm a trans guy and I started transitioning three years ago. And when I started my YouTube channel, I was still living as a woman, and that was before I transitioned, before I realized I was trans. Um, and then I was embarking on the, like, I was, I was making, so I, was, I started making content before I came out as trans and started transitioning. And then when I was transitioning, I was making content. And now, three years since I started transitioning, I'm still making content. It's like very, it's like a surreal experience. Just when I started this whole YouTube journey, I was a very different version of Lev, like very, very different friend in a very in like a literal sense um and also like mentally emotionally just not the same person um i started this channel as let's talk about mental health because at the time i was studying psychology at uni and i was really passionate about mental health and challenging mental health stigma and I was really annoyed with mental health stigma and then I was chal I wanted to create a channel around mental health because that was the only idea I had at the time was I want to make a channel to advocate for mental health which is very good like um and then as I started like having more content creation ideas it was very hard to just restrict it to mental health content um, because I had so many ideas, like my vision sort of expanded for what I can do on the platform. And then I started making content about other things like my personal growth, uh, my lived experiences with physical health conditions, medical stuff, um, my LGBT journey. I started making short films. My first short film was the short film about social anxiety. Um, and then I made content about trans stuff, trans advocacy. I say most of my content is around personal growth stuff and sort of my own reflections of life and my own documentation of life and where I am at that same point in time. And if I were to go back and watch my very first video, even the way I talk on camera is very different because I still had really bad anxiety then. I'm not saying I'd never experience anxiety now, but it's not the same thing as when I started five years ago. Um, now, I don't really limit myself to like making one type of content or like talking about one type of thing. Um, it's, I make content and things based on whatever I, I have in mind, whatever I feel like talking about, or whatever content I feel like making. I've also, yeah, I've made short films. I've like made, I've posted music demos on here too, like little random music snippets that I've made like um, in band lab and music production apps. I've also posted song covers on here before. I do like singing, but like I feel embarrassed and like, I don't know if embarrassed is the right word. I feel a bit shy about it. Um, I posted song covers on here. I don't know where I got the confidence to even post song covers um, from, mind you, I am not like a pro singer and I'm not like a student in like, I, I, I'm not like a student. I'm not learning singing like professionally or anything. It was more like a fun thing that I posted. It was really uh, a fun thing that I did and it's it really helped with like emotional processing of difficult things in my life at the time. Um, I've, yeah, song covers, I've made like, 
a few, I made a few random things during COVID, um, like me dancing to Wii music. Um, that was funny. Yeah, I've just like, it's sort of become like a space for me to not only share content with the world and my experiences and my things I want to talk about. It's also like a whole journey of like growth alongside the content creation. So YouTube for me has not just been purely about content creation. Well, that was my intent, but then I realized a lot of things has come out of doing YouTube and making content for the past five years. Um, one thing is confidence in speaking, um, especially on camera. I used to hate presentations in high school and like school and uni because I had really bad social anxiety and I've not done a presentation since because I've not had to had I can't I've not had to do a presentation since then um since I built confidence and basically finished since I finished uni I haven't done any presentations um but now if I were given to a chance to do a presentation I would I would like love it because I've the thing is, I didn't like presentations in high school and whatnot because I was like following a script, right? I was like, okay, prepare a script, read the script, know it word by word. And I was so stressed that if I didn't regurgitate my planned script um, word for word, then I would stumble and not know where, what to say. Um, me freestyling with literally all of my YouTube videos except for my short films, as in the a, a freestyle with like, these type of videos, I just have an idea, right? And I just roll with it. Like I don't, I don't have a script for this video. I just have an idea that I want to talk about reflections and growth on YouTube. Like I have no script for this. So if I'm given a chance to do a presentation now, it would be much different because I, I would have things in mind. I have points I want to talk about, but I would just not pre look, prepare a script and try to regurgitate everything. I don't know why I started talking about presentations. Yes, growth. It was related to growth and just speaking. Um, I know I'm doing, like I'm speaking to a camera, I'm putting it online um, and y'all are not seeing me live, but still it's very, it's a very big transformation for me going from a kid with severe social anxiety um, to even feeling super scared talking on camera to now. I've, this channel has also been a documentation of like my I think I mentioned my growth over time, but also like essentially time scre screenshot, not screenshot, time snapshot of where I was in my life at that point in time, where I was mentally, where I was emotionally, where I was in terms of my experience with certain things like dating relationships, um, navigating trans identity, navigating identity in general, navigating life things. Um, etc. My perspective, my perspectives on things, how I dealt with things at the time. It's like time snapshots of the different versions of Lev at that point in time that I film the videos that I post on my channel, and it's all here. It's I'm not saying every single thing is here because there's things that are in my personal life that I don't post online or talk about. Um, but yeah, even just based on what I've posted and the content I've made, it's I can it's like such <sighs> there has been so much progression over the fi past fart. There has been so much progression over the past five years that I sometimes can't even keep up with myself. Because sometimes things just happen subconsciously and things process subconsciously and then I don't, I'm not like consciously aware of it and then it hits me and I'm like, and then things hit me later on down the line after my brain's finished cooking it for lack of better words. Um, and then yeah, honestly, sometimes I can't even keep up with myself because so much goes on at the same time. I'm a chaotic person. I might not seem very chaotic online, um, and in my videos, for lack of better words, yes. I might not seem chaotic in my videos, but I'm a very chaotic person in, in like life. Um, and 
I don't think I put enough time in just to stop and think about how far I've come and like what I've actually done because I do a lot of things and then I and then I'm I, and then I lose track of what I've actually done sometimes I lose track of things that I've actually done and I'll be like when I start recalling things and I'm like that's a lot of things I've done and I don't think it's a lot sometimes because I don't I have very high re unrealistic standards and I I'm like oh you didn't do that much even though it was a fuck ton um yeah doing youtube and making content over the five years has also reinforced in my mind that it's okay to not always have the answers like like when i started i didn't intend for my channel to branch out into like a giant tree i was thought about only sticking to one branch which is mental health mental health content and like breaking stigma and challenge and just essentially talking about mental health like my whole channel being around mental health and that's the branch i in initially intended to go down and only stick to that path and then and then different paths branched off that tree and i'm like oh yeah this is a good idea then more things branch off that branch and then this it's become a giant tree now with many different branches and many different pathways and I don't stick to one thing I forgot my original point of of this whole segment wait yes not always having the answers like um sometimes I don't know what type of content to make and that's when I just not pressure myself to think of stuff to make because I remind myself I'm doing YouTube for fun. I'm making content for fun. It's a hobby thing. It's a side gig. I have a full-time job and I'm not doing YouTube as my main job. I'm not doing it as a job. I'm not doing it um, to live off mon monetary. I'm not making money of YouTube to live off. It's not paying for my daily living. That's not, that's, this isn't, my job i have a job that's separate from youtube that's like not online and youtube's my hobby it's a thing i do for fun it's a thing i do to express myself express my creativity express my thoughts document things it's not my job and it's okay to be flexible it's okay to try out new ideas it's okay to try ideas it's this isn't a you must stick to one thing to, um one theme one type of video it's it's also a space for me to just experiment creative creatively and just see what works for me and what doesn't work for me what i enjoy making what i don't enjoy making say if i have an idea and i don't try it and i will never know whether i will actually enjoy it or not or whether it's it's suitable for me whether it's something i want to do if i don't try it so it's like it's like not it's okay to not always have the answers it's okay to be fluid experiment um and sometimes when i don't know what type of content to make i don't think about youtube content um i just do other things like drawing or video game play video games ex experiment with music and then when i have a video idea then i film a video which is exactly what happened with this one is the past week and a half i have no idea what content to make and I'm just starting to remember, oh, I'm almost five years on YouTube. Let's make a video about five years on YouTube. And here I am making a video about being five years on YouTube. So um, I just wait for my subconscious to hit me with ideas, to be honest. And I don't force myself to be like, oh, I'm getting my notebook and be like, what content to make? God damn it, make, think of content, think of content. It's, it's not a chore. And I don't want YouTube, making YouTube content to be a chore for me because that would just completely discourage me from making content because it won't be fun anymore if I'm if it feels like a chore and a burden that I have to do the last part of the video is a message to those of you who are starting YouTube or considering this is mine pardon me I'm um, considering creating YouTube content or thinking about it however feel hesitant First thing I would say is it's okay to not have the answers. It's okay to not have all the gear as well. It's okay to not know what the hell we're doing. Because when I started out, I had no idea what I was doing. I did not 
go into this YouTube content creation having five years of experience in film and editing and video content creation. No, I came in completely unknowledgeable. I came in completely with no background, no experience. I just fumbled into this and I was fumbling for a while until I started figuring out how, how this whole thing works for me. Um, it's okay to not have the gear as well. Like we don't need $5,000 DSLR cameras to make YouTube content. If say a smartphone is all we have, which is really like in today's day and age, like I film my videos now on my phone. Like when I started out, I used DSLR, my dad's DSLR, but I found it way too tedious to like take our content, put it in the computer and edit it on the program, then render it. And then it was too much. Now I just film and edit on my phone. It's very easy. Um, it's okay to not have fancy gear. We don't, it's like, if that's what we want to go towards, um, eventually that's okay too. But if we don't have that to start as a resource, it doesn't mean we can't start creating content. It's okay to start with what we have. If we, if we only have a smartphone, we can start with a smartphone. It's, yes, it's okay to start with YouTube and creating content with just what we have. It doesn't have to be, it's okay to want to work to up towards obtaining better gear, but it's also okay to start with the gear we have and the resources we have and making do with what we have. Um, another example of this making do with resources is I've made my short film um, to close it or not to close it part two, just in my house and backyard during COVID because I also didn't have like, I didn't have a crew. I didn't have people helping me besides one of my friends helping me with a beach scene. Um, I didn't have a whole crew. I didn't have um, all this elaborate set up, fancy lightings and stuff like that. I had my dad's DSLR and myself and I planned all of my, my sh I was about to say shit, but no planned all of my scenes that I, I planned it so that I could film it and make it in my house in my backyard because COVID lockdowns couldn't really do anything outside much. Um, and I was successful. I took the resources I have and the environments that I was confined to during the time and made something of it. And it turned out very well for me. So yeah, it's okay to get creative with what we have. And the other thing is, it's okay to take steps towards it. For example, as someone with severe social anxiety, I failed, actually, yes, I used to have severe social anxiety and I failed my first attempt at trying to create a YouTube channel. Um, I filmed the video, not this channel, it was a different channel, in like 2016. Filmed a video, created a channel, posted a video, deleted the next day, because delete the video and deleted the entire channel the next day because I was too anxious. And it was only like one person watched it, which was my friend. And I was way too anxious to leave it on there. Um, and then I tried again in 2018, and that's the channel that is this channel, and that's, I've stayed on it since, to now and ongoing. Um, yeah, I didn't start out talking like this. I didn't start out confident like this. Like there's no way that this is my, like my first video, being a kid with severe social anxiety and having no idea what the hell I'm doing on YouTube, talk like this. Like, like there's no, there's no way. This talk, five plus years of just continuing with it and practicing and getting more confident on camera and breaking down self-doubt and all of the internal work that I've done over the years and ongoing to reach this point here. Um, so a baby step might be, or I shouldn't, actually, I'm not going to say baby step. A uh, step for you might be to say, if you're not comfortable posting your video, to start by goal is I film a video and I keep it to myself. 
as, as a side note, it's, it's okay to film videos to keep for yourself as well. Not every single video we film has to be online. Like we can film videos and say, keep on our phone or just store somewhere else or put on YouTube as private for our own documentation and no one else can see it. Um, it's okay to do that too. It's not, we have to film videos for the sake of putting it online for the entire world to see. It's also okay to make videos for ourselves. It's okay to make videos for certain people to see and not the entire world. Um, yeah, that's my side note. Um, yes, back to my point. It's okay to take steps like if you want to make content and share it with the world but not feel ready for it yet and the idea of jumping from I've never made a video before, I've never posted myself talking online to I'm going to make a video and post myself on YouTube can be an incredibly daunting thing. It's like almost jumping from like a zero to a hundred but th it's okay to like build the bridge towards it. Why am I doing that? That's like, yes, it's okay to build the bridge towards it. And it's okay not to have to jump from here to over here right away in one go. Like a step might be, I, I experiment, not even film a video like this. It could be, I experiment with speaking on camera. I, I familiarize myself with seeing myself on camera and or being filmed if there's someone filming, um, being familiarized myself with being in front of a camera. And then the next step could be, this is all hyper, this is just examples by the way, it's not a, it's not a step to, it's not a step by step guide, this is just an example. Um, the next step could be, um, I film a one minute video, um, just saying anything, just getting used to speaking on camera. And then I make a short video about a certain topic or something I can think of and just maybe repeating that until we get comfortable. Next step might be showing someone we trust a video that we filmed. Um, and then the next step could be filming a video and showing a, a few more people in our, our circle. And then, you know, the point is it's okay to not have to jump from zero to hundred being I never filmed a video and I've never spoken on camera before and I'm severe, I'm not, severe, I'm very anxious to, I'm going to post a video online and make it public and promote it. Like it's a very big step as I, my point is, it's okay to build a bridge, it's okay to take it slow and um, go at your own pace and do what you need to, um, to work towards the bigger goal that you have. Because this also needs, then we also need to be realistic, right? We also need to be realistic. We also need to be realistic. Um, like I said, that was an example. If the way I did it was just literally like, I filmed a video, I made a new channel in this channel after my first failed attempt, and I posted my video and I left it up there, even though I was very tempted to take it down because my brain, my anxiety was like, take down the video. Uh, I had a lot of self-doubt. I had a lot of uh, self-depreciating thoughts being like, you're not good enough, no one's gonna watch you. Um, is anyone even gonna like your content? Um, just questioning myself, putting myself down um, based on fears of what could happen and my anxiety sort of taking the wheel and running with it. Um, I, I thought about taking down the video. My anxiety was telling me to take down the video, um, but I'm like, fuck you, I'm leaving it here. Uh, fuck you to anxiety. I was like, fuck you. Yes, you feel anxious, but I'm leaving the video up. And it was a very good and wise decision. And I'm glad I didn't take down the, I didn't, I'm glad I didn't take down the video because if I took down the video, that would have reinforced anxiety. Um, I could have taken down the video and, you know, put it back up again, but knowing me, that would deter me from even try, from putting up another video um, during that period. Like it might have been taken a little while longer before I bring myself up to repost the video. I know for me, if I take down the video, it's gonna be worse. The chain of consequences would be worse than me leaving up the video and the possible chain of consequences that my anxiety has in mind. Essentially just go at your own pace, build your own bridge, build your own steps, 
Remember, we all start out as a beginner. We all start out knowing nothing. I did not go into this game um, knowing everything. I still don't know everything. I am far from knowing everything. I, I'm, I should say, I didn't start YouTube with this much confidence knowing how to edit videos, even not having to even know how to edit videos, film videos, talk on camera, um, have structure, have an idea of what I'm doing. I just fumbled through the whole thing and kept fumbling and then through the fumbling eventually figured out how this works for me and what works for me and um, my style and what I feel comfortable with and, and creating content that's genuine to me and yeah, genuine content is important to me because I can't pretend to be someone and make content that's ingenuine to me or do something that's ingenuine to me, even though it like people do it and follow trends that might be very dangerous or hurtful and just silly and not good um, for views and stuff because it's popular. Like I can't do that. It's I just can't bring myself up to do it. Like it just doesn't work for me. My so making genuine content, yeah, it took me a while to figure this out. Um, and through practice, I am I got there. I'm not saying I, I reached the end of it. Like There's still much to learn. There's still much for me to explore. But I have a solid basis now and it took a, a long time to build. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you for your continued support. Um, thank you for watching my videos. Um, yeah. And I will see you in the next one.